Good afternoon. I'm joined by Minister Butler and we are obviously here to release the Productivity Commission inquiry report into caring for older Australians. But before we speak specifically to you about this report, I'd like to make comment on a number of other issues. Firstly, I'd like to say a few words about Mike Ran. Uh, Mike Ran is a great South Australian and a great Labor leader. Obviously today he's made some announcements about his future. He's been a very long-term Labor leader and a very long-term Premier of South Australia. He can be very, very proud of what he has achieved in that time period, including putting the great state of South Australia on a better economic footing. But I'd particularly like to offer my congratulations to Mike Rann for putting social inclusion on the national agenda. I served as the first ever Federal Minister for Social Inclusion. I did that because I wanted to inject into our national political debate more of an understanding about Australians who are at risk of being left behind. Mike Rann had pioneered much of that debate with his social inclusion work in South Australia. In that way, he has changed not only the state of South Australia, but also changed the way we approach national decision making in our nation. I think that that's a very great tribute to his leadership. Mike is also a great campaigner, a great source of political insight and advice, and I'm sure that for whatever the future holds for Mike beyond his days as Premier of South Australia, he will be making a great contribution. I'd also like to congratulate Jay Wetherill on uh, looking forward to becoming Premier of South Australia. I've had the opportunity to work with Jay most particularly in his capacity as Minister for Education, where for a period of time we collaborated as education ministers together on a major reform agenda for Australian schools. I know that he will bring energy and ideas to his role as the Premier of South Australia and I look forward to working with him in that capacity. Then on an entirely different note, can I pay my tribute and the tribute of a grateful nation to Nancy Wake. Nancy Wake died in London yesterday. She was aged 98 years old. Nancy, of course, is uh, best remembered by Australians for her heroic efforts during World War II. Literally, hundreds of Allied personnel are alive because of her efforts and because of the work she did in occupied France. So I know many Australians have seen her life as an inspiration and will be thinking of her role model today. And I did, as Prime Minister, want to pay a very direct tribute to Nancy. Now moving to the Productivity Commission's report on the caring of older Australians. I'm pleased to be here today to launch this report. It's rightly said that you can tell a great deal about a society by the way in which it treats its older members. And against that standard, Australia's aged care sector has a lot to be proud of. There are a lot of people working in aged care who have done tremendously good work over many years. But there are many challenges and many opportunities that lie ahead as our society ages and as the choices and needs of those Australians who are becoming older involve. Understanding that ageing was changing, that the number of uh, older Australians were changing as a proportion of our society, that their choices and options would need to be different than those of the past, I asked the Productivity Commission uh, in 2010 to get on with the job of looking <coughs> at aged care for us and presenting the government with very detailed options for reform. Very pleased that we're in a position today to launch this report as a result, caring for older Australians. 
Now we know that in the future Australians are going to live longer, they are going to be healthier as they age, they are going to be more prosperous than previous generations. Indeed, last week I remarked in a speech that we are really dealing already with two generations of older Australians, uh, with our uh, most uh, elderly Australians and now with the retiring generation of baby boomers. And as I remarked, those generations have got different outlooks and different aspirations. And in particular, as the baby boomers age, they are likely to reshape what it is to be an older Australian, the way they reshaped what it was to be a younger Australian, and the way their generation has reshaped the understanding that we have of adult lives and the choices within adult lives. So as a nation, we face the challenge of providing care to these older Australians, knowing that the number of older Australians will grow. Uh, we'll bring our principles to determining the future as our, our, as our society ages and in terms of the treatment of older Australians. Firstly, we will recognise that older Australians are rightly viewed as an asset to our nation. We will also recognise that every older Australian has earned a right to access appropriate care as they age. We won't be leaving anyone behind. We'll also want to see a system that offers more options than the past has. A system that is financially sustainable and is fair for those being cared for as well as for the rest of society and a system which meets the highest standards of quality. Now, I recognise that the question of ageing is not only a question for Australians ageing <coughs> themselves, but also for their family members. Many Australians of my age are concerned about uh, their parents as they age. So I understand the interest in the report that we are releasing today will be wide and deep in Australian society. And I want to say that what we will do as a government in dealing with this report is we will be ensuring that there is a proper process of review, discussion and analysis of its recommendations. That won't be a process just within government, though of course within government we will be thinking about it very deeply. It will be a process that engages the community and will be led by Minister Butler. Minister Butler will be assisted in consultations and conversations about this report by the National Aged Care Alliance and the Ageing Consultative Committee. We will be working through what the recommendations of this report mean in a conversation with Australians. The government will do that work before we respond to this report. Uh, can I say that all of that work means today we are not responding to the recommendations of this report and we are not going to rule things in or out arising from this report. I know that it would be simplistic to rule things in or out before they've been subject subjected to appropriate review, analysis and discussion. So we will not be taking the course of ruling things in or out today. And I'd say to anyone who wants to take that kind of simplistic approach, that in my view, that would be letting the community down at this critical point for our ageing population. We need, as a society, uh, to have this conversation. We owe it to our parents and we owe it to the current generation of baby boomers, as well as to Australians who are already retired, to ensure that we treat this report respectfully and that we work through the complex and comprehensive issues that it raises, mindful of all of the difficulties of finding solutions in this area. I'll turn now to comments <coughs> from Minister Butler and then we'll take questions. Well, thank you, Prime Minister. And as the Prime Minister has outlined, aged care reform uh, is an incredibly important part of the government's broader approach to ageing. The sustainability of our aged care system will be a very significant challenge as Australia's population ages. And I think the statistics are fairly well known. Over the coming decades, the number of Australians over 65 will increase from about 3 million today to over 9 million. The number of Australians over 85 will more than 
quadruple from about 400,000 today to almost 2 million. As people live longer, we know that their care needs become more complex, so we'll see an increase in prevalence rates of chronic conditions like diabetes and dementia. Uh, that growth uh, feeds into the demand for aged care. The government accepts that the aged care sector will increasingly struggle with that growth in demand, which is why we asked the Productivity Commission to de deliver us a range of options for long-term reform in this sector. The final report is indeed comprehensive. I think the Prime Minister is only holding up the initial volume. Its comprehensive nature runs to fully 750 pages plus appendices with 58 very far-reaching recommendations. But an important theme of the report is that of independence. We know that older Australians overwhelmingly want to live independently in their own home as long as possible and preferably, if possible, for the rest of their lives. Uh, this report emphasises the need to gear our aged care and our health systems around that preference, as well as a more general emphasis on greater consumer choice. The report obviously deals also with financing arrangements for residential aged care, what we used to call nursing homes and hostels. Now, this will inevitably raise a degree of speculation about the role of accommodation bonds in aged care. It's important to be very clear about how the system currently operates and has operated now for many years. Right now, almost 40% of older Australians in residential care or in nursing homes have had to pay a bond to get their bed. Uh, bonds currently average about a quarter of a million dollars. The Productivity Commission report tells of many bonds in excess of $500,000 and even in excess of $1 million. They are usually raised through people having to conduct effectively a fire sale of their own home at the point when they realise they need to enter residential aged care. Now, the Productivity Commission was urged by some providers to extend that arrangement of lump sum entry bonds to the rest of the residential aged care sector, particularly to high care beds. Uh, it is important to note that the Productivity Commission has not recommended an extension of lump sum accommodation bonds. Instead, it's proposed uh, other options for older Australians to be able to contribute to the cost of their accommodation, and those uh, options will obviously be a very important part of the conversation that we have now with the aged care sector, and more importantly, with older Australians and their families themselves. It's also important, I think, to say that the report recommends much stronger links between the aged care sector and the broader health system, uh, links which are much easier to comprehend now in light of the government's reforms in primary care, uh, emphasis on preventative health and development of a 21st century e-health system. This report, in broad terms, is incredibly complex. It has very significant ramifications, not only for government, but more importantly, for older Australians themselves in the way in which they manage their own affairs. The government's approach, as the Prime Minister has outlined, has been to release the report quickly uh, in, or in order to allow a conversation to begin immediately with older Australians and with the aged care sector about its recommendations. And I start that conversation tomorrow morning. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you very much.